Medics for joining us, dear viewers. This is Hobby Known of Africa's English program, and this is our weekly program, Diplomacy, that we are going to discuss on the ground. Ethiopia, when it stands down, construction and its overall construction as well as its technical matters. Have a wonderful time with us today. I was half one here with me. My guest today is Dr. Samuel Tafara, an independent researcher on the ground, Ethiopia, when it stands down, and a scholar with the Rizaba University. Doctor, many thanks for joining me. Welcome to Swiss. It's a pleasure. Well, just to begin with, uh, Ethiopia successfully conducted the second filling water operation uh, in, in the previous weeks. What does that mean for all Ethiopians in the country as well? First, I would like to say congratulations for um, everyone uh, who has received this uh, news of the second impoundment of the Ethiopian Grand Renaissance Dam with joy. Uh, this is a big achievement, and we have been, as you know, through, a, through different ups and downs, particularly uh, through our engagement in the trilateral talks uh, with uh, Sudan and Egypt, which was mediated by the African Union. Uh, so we have seen a number of uh, challenges, uh, a number of impasses between, between the three countries, despite the fact that Ethiopia has always been uh, bringing a, an agenda that promotes cooperation um, starting from the design of the, the dam through uh, the filling processes and the, actually also through in terms of reaping also the benefits as well. So uh, this is a second achievement. This is a big milestone. The dam is uh, conducted uh, using rainwater in order not to affect the water uh, amounts that both countries receive in, in the regular uh, years and seasons before. So that, that would result in a change of some positions. And on the other hand, uh, the, the generation of power and the generation of electricity would mean uplifting millions of people out of uh, uh, poverty. We would expect more Ethiopians, particularly those in the rural areas, to see light. Uh, we would expect hospitals to resume their uh, normal functions, we would not be uh, listening to cases and reports that people have died, women giving birth have died, people under surgical operation have died as a result of sh sh power shortcuts. And this will definitely also add to the national electric grid that also aims to connect uh, countries in the region, particularly in the Horn of Africa, uh, through electrification uh, programs which would boost uh, economic integration, improved bilateral relationships, improved uh, regional relationships, which results also in the demilitarization of border areas, security of border areas, free and uh, 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 very peaceful security-wise movement of people in and out of uh, the border areas for trade, for various purposes, and that overall brings in a greater uh, political integration in the Horn of Africa, which is what the Ethiopian government has always been aspiring to achieve. Ethiopia has been conducted the first and second round of healing water operation without uh, reaching an agreement with uh, the negotiators, Egypt and Sudan. Can Ethiopia do so or continue the construction of the dam without reaching on an agreement still? Yeah, the kind of... Uh, it's not about... Uh, ignoring their questions to reach an agreement. That, that should be underscored. What Ethiopia has been saying so far is that it won't sign an agreement that respects and maintains the status quo, which is uh, ascribed as the historical water, maintaining the historical water rights by Sudan and Egypt, which is a colonial treaty that leaves no single drop of water to Ethiopia and the rest of the riparian countries, right? So there, there is no way that we can sign such, such kind of uh, agreement or a binding, uh, legally binding agreement, which, com which, compromi which compromises our rights to the water shares of the Nile and our rights also to, 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 uh, um, to, 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 to protect our national interests and uh, uh, securities. So, yeah, that's what we did. We have tabled the issue for discussion and the main objective of that particular uh, tabling of this agenda for discussion is also to, to reach a consensus so that the three countries can cooperate in every aspect of uh, the damming process, in including the construction of the process and reaping the benefits uh, of uh, uh, 
uh, the, 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 the income generated from the sale of uh, electricity as well. Given, given or we, don't, we don't also need to forget that there are a number of other uh, positive uh, developments that, that, that came, that would definitely come out of that uh, damming process which benefits all the countries. So the Ethiopian government has been very uh, strict and very vocal uh, on the issue of signing a binding deal which is uh, bowing to the 1959 water sharing agreement between the countries. And that actually is the very basic question why the cooperative framework of agreement would not materialize into action, right? Because the two countries uh, decided not to be a party to, 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 to the CFA agreement because, the, because of the same reason that I was mentioning about. They wanted their historical agreement be maintained and respected, which, 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 which is not fair, honestly speaking. What is the uh, DOP Declaration of Principles that was signed uh, in 2015, I think, yeah. that was signed between Ethiopia, Egypt and Sudan? What is exactly the, their agreement? That's uh, a declaration of uh, the, the willingness of the three states, the three governments, uh, to continue uh, the negotiation process in good faith. So that's uh, like a primary uh, a, a, a consensational uh, agreement uh, so that the damming, uh, the, the negotiations on the damming process of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam would be fair and uh, free and also doesn't harm the, the benefits of the, the three countries. So it's like a declaration of agreements, I would say. Uh, and there are a number of issues included in that particular declaration where the three heads of states have signed. And one is this con controversial issue of uh, impounding the dam. You know, you might have heard a number of times Egypt and Sudan accusing Ethiopia of unilaterally starting the filling process. That was the case when we were filling the dam last year. It remained the case this year, and I would expect it will remain in the upcoming filling schedules as well. But the matter of the fact is that the Declaration of the Principles clearly stipulates that, indicates that, the uh, impoundment of the dam is inseparable or is part and parcel of the construction of the dam, the damming process itself. That was clearly indicated. And to, to effect uh, this statement, uh, the three countries have agreed uh, to bring independent national researchers panel of, and establish a panel of experts compromising five experts from each country, a total of 15. They've sat together and discussed on the issues, the technicalities of uh, the, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, and they are the ones who've produced the filling schedule, the stage-based filling schedule that's publicly open and available for everyone, anywhere else, if interested. So that, that, that filling schedule, schedule has been also agreed, not only by the experts, but also the heads of states. So there is no reason for any member state to, to stand against that and say or refute the very idea of uh, the, the process of uh, re reaching at that con consensational uh, stage-based filling uh, process result. So things are going on that regard. But as, as, as you hear, um, Egyptians, their leaders, their experts have a number of times been uh, taking a position against to, uh, what they have promised and what they have agreed in the Declaration of Principles and in the discussions they had with, within the panel of experts itself. Well, how do you see uh, the long-standing interest of Ethiopia, the government of Ethiopia, in seeking for a reliable and reasonable solution in the dispute over the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam? How do you recognize that? Yeah, Ethiopia's uh, interest and commitment to cooperation, a wider scale, like uh, basin-wide uh, cooperation, has, has been there since the 1960s, right? It's not only on, on, on Nile or on Abai. It actually starts on Ethiopia's role and commitment to bring Africans together. When the Organization of African Unity was established in the 1960s, right, uh, Ethiopia has played a pivotal and major role in terms of bringing uh, the, the divided uh, African countries on opinions and uh, given its land, uh, given opportunities invested in, in, in its resources actually to establish the Organization of African Unity that 
later uh, was uh, changed into the African Union, which, which actually Ethiopia is also now uh, giving more opportunities for the Union itself uh, to, to make itself available in this big, important uh, decision-making processes like the mediation of the Grand Ethiopian Alliance in Saddam itself. In those, na in those early days, Egypt, 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 Egyptians has been very much focused on um, uh, pan-Arabic uh, discourses, bringing in and trying to attach and relate uh, Egypt with the Arab world, also Arabizing the Nile River itself. So we have, we've come from a very different uh, starting point, and all Ethiopians' paths and discourses were to produce a potential within the continent and the region that glorifies the Union's name, the Union's achievements, and also uh, increase its credibility and uh, uh, search very, very, very important uh, uh, capabilities and opportunities within the Union itself that can resolve issues related to uh, water resources, issues related to border conflicts, issues related to uh, economic integration and challenges associated to that. So, uh, Ethiopia's commitment can be explained from this historical perspective, but when coming to particularly the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam and the use of the Nile and the development of the Nile Basin itself, as I have been mentioning earlier, Ethiopia has masterminded the establishment of the Nile Basin Initiative in, in 1999, which uh, led to the, uh, the birth of the Cooperative Framework of Agreement that was signed by six countries, ratified by four, left with two more countries to ratify it among the signatories to establish the Nile Basin, the Integrated Nile Basin uh, River Commission, which was uh, supposed to guide all development activities within the Nile Basin itself, so that countries can come, can come together in a round table, discuss their issues, their challenges and also development aspirations which are peculiarly focused on, on or targeted to developing the Nile so that we avoid redundancies so that whatever pro project is going to be developed within the Nile, two Niles, in the Nile of Basin, countries could cooperate or form mechanisms that they can uh, settle uh, their disputes, potential disputes that come out of such um, expansion of uh, the, 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 their development ambitions. So, yeah, Ethiopia's role c can be seen from these two perspectives. Why Egypt and Sudan want to internationalize the agenda of the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance, even beyond the African Union? Isn't this a disrespect for the Union? That was very clear, even in the last round of uh, meetings at the United Nations Security Council. You've, you've seen uh, the foreign ministers of both countries uh, clearly stating and uttering out their under uh, estimation uh, to the Union's capabilities and abilities to, to mediate uh, as a very simple uh, negotiation, you know. So that starts from that. You know, the, the way that they look at the, the, the mechanisms that the African Union is trying to uh, uh, produce, bring or introduce to resolve the dispute between the three countries is very, very saddening. Uh, unlike Ethiopia, who has always had the phase in, in, in the continent's abilities uh, to, to produce effective mechanisms that can resolve our problems, not only on the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance time, also on potential other problems in, in our region and in the continent itself. So, yeah, I have been saying, this has a history, like I've, as I was mentioning, you know, their, their interests and their souls were very much tied to the, the Arab League, uh, a political organization which, to me, irrationally decides without any evidence, uh, looking at only a, 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 a side of the, the perspective of its member states as well, its, its member states alone. So that's not, that's not good, you know. Decisions at that level should be very much looked into details and uh, analysis should be made on whether or not the decisions that you're uh, stating and issuing out is also affecting life of peoples, millions of poor elsewhere uh, in, 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 in a continent nearby. And the impacts actually are very much strong, right? 
Uh, the Arab-Ethiopia relations or Arab-African relations have very long roots and honestly speaking, um, Ethiopians also have the largest Muslim population if Islam is one of the criteria where they have, where they are trying always to show their allegiance. Uh, bloodlines, speaking of that, Ethiopia's through trade has been linked to the, 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 the rest of the Arab world and we have a centuries of history on that. And we've also people of the Arab descent. Uh, Religious-wise, you can mention a number of other issues as well. So, you know, the, the decisions of the Arab League always are out of that context, context. or so they they're not well into considering these historical and economic uh, and political factors as well. And our ways also need to be looked at, uh, at, looked at from the same perspective, I would say, you know. Okay, the Arab League as a, as a gathering of some p p politically uh, loyal uh, groups who entertain ideas irrationally is something uh, that needs to be seen uh, different in, at a different lens from the fact that Arab-Ethiopia relationships or Arab-Africa relationships in general uh, has also a very strong, solid people-to-people -people and culture-to-culture, religion-to-religion kind of uh, engagements. So that's it, yeah. Well, uh, in order of negotiation, can a meditator can make a decision? It's, it, it depends on the power that they, they, they are given. You know, like, if, if you are an observer, your role is to observe. If you are a mediator, you, you, your role is to mediate, to, to, to bring uh, points, agendas, that the, whoever is taking part in the mediation processes can, can agree or can, can deliberate on. So the decision at the end of the day is a sovereign decision which is left to the countries involved here. Yeah. So in African issues, the only mediator uh, will be an African Union, yeah? Yeah, currently it's the African Union. Well, uh, why the government of Sudan has been changing its stand from time to time? Because they, previously they were the, by the side of Ethiopia as well as, of course, by the side of truth. Yeah. And now they are changing their stand. What, what is their problem? Yeah, okay, different countries, different statesmen, have uh, changing opinions. Um, they, they can change their uh, decisions and positions at any time, too. And whenever they want, that their, 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 the stakes that they are uh, fighting for or arguing about uh, have, uh, some, some, can, can bear some, some form of fruits, right? Sudan, for example, during the construction of the dam, during uh, the Bashir's time, has been very much a uh, staunch supporter of the construction of the dam because it has experienced a similar uh, uh, success and some similar uh, benefits from the, the, the previous damming process, damming process from uh, rivers in Ethiopia, particularly the Takazi Dam. You know, they, they have uh, seen how the damming of the Takaze has helped Sudanese farmers in terms of uh, getting them regulated <coughs> waters throughout the year, uh, giving them the opportunity of producing commercial crops, which um, quite a lot of fruit is also uh, exported to Ethiopia that we import, like onions, uh, fruit crops, and so on and so forth. And they have also received electric electrification, they got access to electricity, so they know the, the, the benefits. But the problem with Sudan, to me, is the, the influence, the external in influence in the affairs, in the internal affairs of the Sudanese government. You know, as you know, Sudan is a big country uh, which has still problems with its uh, south neighbor. There are internal conflicts in Darfur, there are uh, uh, popular uprisings still ongoing. Um, people are going out in the streets, demanding the the, the, the government to regulate uh, the price of food, the price of fuel. The uh, economic crisis is uh, prevalent, and he, as you know, uh, Ethiopia has actually contributed a lot in mediating the, the civil and the, the military um, uh, sections, uh, which still, <laughs> to me, is. Uh, but two governments is, is, is presiding over uh, one sovereign state, right? So there is a division that which Egypt has actually capitalized on exploiting it. So when Sudanese come to the, the negotiation table, to me, they are, they are bringing in uh, <laughs> two, three divergent views and opinions. And then uh, first they need to settle the differences amongst themselves. 
and come as the student proper, as a suffering Sudanese country, which who cares most about the interests of the people and the interests of the sovereign state. In, in a condition where uh, we are now, uh, in a state where Sudanese are now uh, getting or capturing Sudanese real and authentic interests in, in, in the GERD uh, would be a bit difficult to me. Otherwise, Sudan would definitely change its positions. Actually, not only Sudan, Egypt, I would expect, would also bow to our requests and to the requests of the Basin Wide Initiatives uh, that uh, the 1999 Nile Basin Initiative has uh, introduced. Once fully the ground of our Wanessa Sudan is fully completed, what are the major plans or what are the major benefits that the downstream countries can get from this uh, dam? One big benefit is regulated flow of uh, water, river water, you know? The Nile River, particularly uh, the Blue Nile, the, the, the Abai uh, that, we, that originates from the Ethiopian side, um, has a huge uh, amount of water during the rainy seasons, and particularly that comes from July to August and September, right? So uh, in the rest of the seasons or the rest of the year, we, you cannot get uh, such a big uh, volume of water going down. To, to whatever purpose Sudan and Egypt are use, utilizing it. So uh, the damming would ensure uh, the, the making of a big reservoir at uh, a higher altitude compared to the other different dams that Sudan and Egypt have built over, uh, over the half a century, uh, giving it an opportunity of efficiently storing water. Like when you go down to Sudan and further to Egypt and the Mediterranean, the, the, the loss of water through evapotranspiration because of the environmental conditions is very high. So at Guba, at 614 meters above sea level altitude, Ethiopia provides an opportunity for the two countries downstream to get regulated, controlled water throughout the year. So they would be receiving a good regulated amount of water throughout the year. So uh, they can uh, conduct irrigation-based agriculture everywhere. So they can make sure that they don't need to worry about whether or not uh, the floods would destroy their dams or destroy infrastructures along the way, uh, silt their uh, canals, agricultural irrigation canals, because the silt is retained here. Uh, it, it gives a lot of benefits. In Sudan, for example, it can increase the command area where Sudanese would easily get water for, for, uh, because it will help in raising the water table in, 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 the, in the command area nearby the dam. Like it's, the dam is very close to the Sudanese border, right? So any Sudanese farmer can dig uh, a hole and can get water easily than ever before. And the other benefit is, you know, this is a big dam, a mega dam, uh, which is expected to produce 6,000 megawatts of electricity. It's a huge uh, electric uh, producer. And part of that electricity would be exported. And Sudan has that experience. So Egypt can, can, can benefit from that experience as well. And that will help them derive their industries, which, in the, which, which directly also means driving their economies, increasing their economies, their uh, investment opportunities. So the, 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 the benefits are manifold, you know, and, and this also would impact uh, the, uh, the formation of a very stable region and a very stable basin because the, 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 con the connections, the interdependence, the interdependence that's created as a result of uh, electrification uh, projects or positive and reciprocal kind of relationships between all the countries uh, that are neighbors with Ethiopia would help in stabilizing the region, would help in demilitarizing the region, because poverty, as you know, is the main cause of all the challenges that we face now. It will reduce the number of youths that used to die in, in, in the sea, looking for better uh, life opportunities. So you can, Ethiopia can retain a number of youths within its soil. Sudanese can retain a number of uh, people within their soils. 
and no other Egyptians would also uh, look for that option as a, a, a viable option to leave the country while it can uh, reap benefits in its own region. And this also has a very direct consequences, particularly in the uh, trafficking of persons or uh, illegal trafficking of uh, migrants and people, particularly in the Ethiopia Sudan border areas. So uh, the, the benefits are uh, quite a lot. Well, apart from uh, generating electricity, yeah. what can the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam can bring for all Ethiopia and Ethiopians uh, upon its completion? Yeah, the lake it, it forms is a big lake. Uh, it's a 74 billion cubic meter potential lake, which, which can be used for uh, the, the production of uh, you know, fish, like fisheries, fisheries projects can be established, tourism in the islands that will be formed would be very much suited for this particular purpose. You can organize, uh, use into different other projects because it, you have electricity now. You have a lake which can produce fish, which can be used for recreational values, uh, which can be used for irrigation purposes as well, uh, without compromising the, uh, the, 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 the interests of uh, people downstream. So, and also the town, urbanization, which is a very important issue that needs to be discussed. You know, you will have tourist lodges, you will have big cities uh, expanding, uh, infrastructures, be it road infrastructures, education, health infrastructures, recreational infrastructures being built, offering opportunities for millions of Ethiopians and others interested to, to, to come and to, to invest. It also attracts uh, FDI, foreign direct investment, because there's a big uh, potential, a big opportunity that would uh, attract investors from outside of Ethiopia also to come and engage themselves in agro-processing industries and industries of, uh, the industries, of industries of their wish. Yeah, so it's uh, a huge opportunity for, for Ethiopia and for the region as well. Hereafter, uh, what will be the way out for an agreement for all the uh, stakeholders participating on the negotiation of uh, the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam? What the way out for their agreement? The way out, personally, should, should be uh, looking for uh, mechanisms or to resume the CFA uh, process. Like, you know, the trilateral negotiations has, has, has not bear fruits honestly speaking, particularly from uh, uh, looking at from a, a point of reaching at a certain consensus, right? Because Egypt and Sudan want, 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 want Ethiopia to sign a binding agreement, uh, which is not fair, which is not acceptable. And Ethiopia also wanted this to end in peace and with reaching at some, some, some sort of uh, agreement that was not also possible. But the process was very important to me. The process has given Ethiopia to explain its causes, to explain and to state how cooperation is the only way out of this impasses. Without cooperation, without uh, a compromise, without reaching an, at, 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 at a common understanding, uh, a solution cannot be sought. So, now we are, we are at this stage, and Ethiopia's current push should be, according to um, um, my experiences, my analysis, is that it should, Ethiopia should, should bring these discussions back to the CFA uh, table, and then should lobby the remaining two countries to sign, uh, to ratify the, uh, the CFA, and then uh, realize the establishment of the Nile Basin Integrated River Commission which I think would also uh, push Sudan and Egypt uh, to join the rest of the countries because they, they cannot alienate themselves and that, that doesn't give them the, the opportunity to maximize their benefits as well. So they, they, they need to sit down together with the rest of the riparian countries and respect the rights and the development aspirations of the other countries as well, while at the same time they engage in dialogues to maintain their uh, rights to the use of the water as well. So to me, uh, bringing uh, the discussions, the trilateral negotiations back to the, the CFA would be the very good way out. And also as Felix, uh, Mr. Felix, president of the, Congo, the Congolese uh, yes. president, who is the chairperson of the, the, the negotiations in the African Union was mentioning, 
that GERD should not be looked at a single project or a project in, uh, within the uh, basin itself, but it should be linked to other continental-wide initiatives like uh, the Africa, the continental African free trade area zone uh, that promotes trade exchanges between African countries, not only in the Horn of Africa, also throughout the, throughout the continent as well. So that such initiatives would be replicated in many different parts of Africa to increase uh, the, the, the African Union's and the member states' leverage in terms of uh, exchanging in, or engaging in trade relationships between countries outside of the continent. So more connections, more integrations, particularly in trade between African countries and regional economic uh, entities would mean more opportunities for Africans uh, and more uh, investments in African potentials, which definitely would lift millions of people of uh, African origin out of poverty and then ensure peace and stability in the continent as, as, as a whole. And that's why I think many people are just advising the African Union uh, to consider the Ground Ethiopia Renaissance Dam project in the 2063 agenda of the African Union. Do you agree on that? I very much have been a proponent of that because, you know, there are 15 uh, flagship projects of which the Af continental free trade area zone is one. Uh, we have all, also one uh, interesting initiative on uh, energy production, which is the Enga Dam project. Uh, project. You know, the Inga Dam is expected to produce an amount of energy which is more than six times what we are aspiring to produce from GERT. For, for, for some reasons that doesn't materialize. You know, uh, I think that's also one reason why the, the, the Congolese president wanted to, 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 to raise this issue and make a link with uh, the, the continental free trade area zone that the energy production should be a traded item or commodity within that, uh, within that framework. Uh, because Congo, river, Congo has many rivers, and Congo, River Congo is, is one of the biggest rivers in the continent, and with 40,000 megawatts of uh, electric uh, generation potential, if materialized, would, would light uh, millions of people, would uh, drive uh, economies, uh, would, would be an engine to many of the industries in the mining sector, in the transport sector, in, 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 in overall uh, sectors, that in, 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 in any attempts actually, in multiple attempts to, 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 to uh, lift Africans out of uh, sordid poverty, right? So uh, that is why he, he, he made a, a relationship to the, the, grand, the, the potentials of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam by investing a lot, by realizing the Engadam project as one of the 15 flagship projects in, in Africa, uh, the, the area, the Great Lakes region, the, the Southern Africa in particular, and the, the Northeastern Africa also, um, in connection with what we are, we are doing in Ethiopia, would, would benefit a lot. And that would give light to, to, to many. That would mean hopes to many use who want to, who, who seek and who die actually seeking for better uh, life opportunities. So I, I propose, uh, if possible, to include the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam project as part of the flagship projects, or else to make a connection or to make a reference to it so that others could uh, continue to do the same uh, in, in, in all river, major river basins that have the potential of uh, Gerdes type and kind. Since the GERD is a self-finance, what is expected from the public, from the larger society, in supporting the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance? Yeah, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is still under construction, as you know. We, we've still left with many, uh, many uh, issues. So, uh, the, 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 the public commitment uh, should continue, as it used to be in the beginning, right? Without the support and co contributions and com commitment of Ethiopians in, in various forms, we couldn't have uh, achieved uh, the achievement that we see uh, today. So that has to continue, not only uh, in terms of uh, finalizing the construction of uh, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, but also we Ethiopians across the world, on all work, from all walks of life, should, should think of what they should contribute uh, beyond 
the, the, the completion of the damming process in terms of engagement in uh, investments that can contain a huge uh, jobless uh, use, providing it an opportunity of employment. Uh, they should uh, they should engage in um, in, in a number of uh, other sectors so that they can contribute they, they continue to make contributions uh, which helps them actually boost their uh, financial capacities and capabilities while at the same time giving them opportunities to help their brothers and sisters so their commitments need to increase and we are a poor country uh, uh, Completing the guard wouldn't doesn't mean this is uh, the end of the path to uh, being wealthy, economically strong. We have quite a number of issues, and as we have quite a number of river basins, our potentials our potentials to develop are still many, and then we need to come together and show the kind of commitment that we have uh, that that we've made in terms of completing the construction of uh, the Grand Interpenetration Stadium, we need also to embark on other projects similarly uh, to increase the potentials of the, the regions where the rivers, the river, the, the river basins are found uh, and make links to, uh, to increased GDP, to increased human development index, to increased uh, global peace index, and to generally increase the prosperity and well-being of all Ethiopians. Well, uh, lastly, do you think that the green legacy being underway for the last two or three years in Ethiopia has a positive impact for the Grand Ethiopia Water Sense Dam construction? Definitely. How? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. You know, siltation has always been, um, or sediment transportation has always been a major threat uh, that decreases the lifespan of dams anywhere in the country, anywhere else in the world. We have also good ex experiences in Ethiopia as well. Uh, properly unrehabilitated uh, catchments or basins would, would mean increased erosion because we have uh, rainy seasons where we receive heavy showers of uh, rain. And in, in those scenarios, uh, the topsoil will be eroded. And then that sediment, which is transported from the hills, the terrains, and also from the farmlands, join rivers, and those, do, those rivers join the bigger rivers, one of which is uh, the Abaya River, where we are uh, damming, and that will result in siltation. So in order to in de reduce the impact of uh, siltation of the dams, catchment rehabilitation would be a very important assignment that Ethiopia need to embark on in the future. We have, we have started it um, earlier, but that needs to be strengthened and that needs to continue in all the catchments in the country, not only on Abai, but we have a number of other uh, catchments. One, because not only it reduces silt, but also having forests would mean having a regulated environment and temperature and also having a continuous supply of water that feeds our lakes and that feeds water to our dams. And with that, we would also we can we are also able to reduce the tensions that came as a result of the scarcity rhetorics of uh, whoever is downstream complaining about reduced water uh, flows to their dams. So that is a very super uh, initiative. It's a great initiative, and everybody need to take it personally and continue. It shouldn't be like a, a month's time, a campaign process every time led by the Prime Minister of his uh, telling everybody to do this and that. It should be taken seriously and every Ethiopian has to, uh, has to believe in the power of planting trees and the power of uh, the trees uh, in bringing more water and in, in regulating the atmosphere and the weather in the world. Well, Doctor, I'm almost close to end with my questions. I'm done. Uh, lastly, if you have a general message for the public, for the scholars, for the negotiators and others, you're highly welcome. Yeah, my, 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 my message to, uh, to, to all Ethiopians, or to, 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 to the Ethiopian government, is that like, you know, Ethiopia is a developing economy. We have uh, quite a lot to do to transform 
our economies to leapfrog uh, into a better uh, lifestyle and that depends on uh, the, the power of its people and the power of its leaders. In our uh, in institutions, be it research and academic institutions, need to focus more on in bringing uh, in experts, uh, producing experts uh, that can help continue uh, like the and engage in the negotiation processes that can help uh, the, uh, the in fulfilling the development aspirations of the country and the, the damming of the, the, the construction of the damming uh, of the, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has, 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 has left a very good lesson for all of us to, to, to design our uh, way forward, the, the modalities on how Ethiopia should, should proceed and which sectors that we need to focus more to bring lasting and sustainable uh, development in terms of utilizing our uh, rivers properly, particularly the transboundary rivers properly. So institutions and the government need to focus on bringing in the most uh, important personnel who can fight for their countries, patriots equipped with knowledge, the appropriate knowledge uh, to, to safeguard the interests of uh, their country. In institutions should be established and built on that line that can address uh, our upcoming potential challenges based on the lessons that we have uh, from GERD. And that's what I would like to uh, say. Dr. Samuel Tafarani, the Peru researcher on the Guandi Ethiopia Renaissance Dam, I really appreciate for sitting down with us and sharing your best experience, best knowledge. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Well, dear viewers, this will bring us to the end of this edition. I will come on the mobile hosting and produce in this program for you. Till the next edition, have a beautiful time.